we're gonna do some cultural exchange. So, uh, we're gonna learn a new language, or at least a phrase from a new language, it's my mother tongue. So I'm gonna say sak pase, which means what's up, or what's happening, and you guys are gonna pronounce ma boule. All right, all your energy this time, sak pase. Perfect, love that, thank you so much. So let's dive into some authorization. It's an aspect in GraphQL that is always fun to think about. The scope of my topic is really gonna be done from the perspective of enforcement at the SDL layer or the S schema. So really where you're leveraging directives to annotate your schema to enforce particular rules on how fields and resolvers and types should be enforced. Let's talk about a little bit federation. Federation is a great story for us, us starting to break apart our complex domains into smaller pieces and where these checks would live. So we're talking about annotating our schema with these directives. So you have a check that's happening at your GraphQL layer. Now, simply having an attribute does, and that you can read something doesn't mean you can read it for every particular account across the entire system. So there is a secondary check that you will need to do within your particular domain. So now that starts to fragment that out. And if you have an environment where subgraphs are implemented across various different languages, that makes the challenges all the more uh, difficult. But if we could extract these permissions and all the checks that we're performing for a particular directives of sorts, right? We can uh, assume that there's definitely a context at play and communicating that context out is really what's the challenge up here. So if we can abstract that, uh, that context and have that all centralized in a particular location, it may be a service or whatnot, but the really what's focused is being able to say, hey, here is what the, the rules at play for us to effectively enforce this particular resolver or for a query or mutation. Context is supreme, especially when we're talking about authorization. It's, well, it's what we're all about modeling and all that we're doing checks against. So, Let's see how context can start to evolve um, once we start and how we can model that. So we have channels that has owners, editors, viewers, but channel is also within a particular org. So we can kind of like start to scope that out. An owner should be able to edit anything within their, their particular channel. And anyone who's able to edit something should also be able to view something. We, we have our orgs and within our orgs we have members. Members of our org should be able to view things within our particular channel. So now you start to see that we have a graph, and what brings up to my next point, which is GBAC, uh, graph-based access control. So we're seeing how the relationships is really how these context starts to uh, manifest itself within our system. So maybe if we could find a primitive that we can use to represent that, it can improve how we can decouple authorization checks and centralize that in a, in a manner that we can consistently uh, apply these rules across our subgraphs. GBAC, however, tends to imply that you might have a graph database to have these capabilities within your system. So the space has kind of like gravitated over to ReBAC to really emphasize relationship-based access control. RBAC and ABAC. Um, these are very simple checks. However, they suffer from lack of uh, context being available, where RBAC checks orders and ABAC checks the existence of a capability this is straightforward to implement. However, once you start to break apart your monolith, there's additional complexities that it introduces. PBAC and ReBAC are great ways of uh, capturing and also communicating the context at play for a more complete authorization pictures of various states of, of your system. So uh, there are other components and pieces that these introduce to your application. However, like context is the most important aspect of consistently enforcing your author authorization that's a tongue twister, throughout your system. When talking about federation, GraphQL, we're, we, we focus a lot on schema modeling, our data domain, our teams. How do we effectively break these apart and bring it, build these graphs together across a large um, a domain and topic? But we seldom do the same for authorization. So federated data graph, <laughs> meet your authorization graph. And maybe there's an opportunity here at play. So whether your context is simple, where you have a linear permission model or one that forms more out of the tree, or you need to evolve your system to be able to support uh, context graphs, you can still use a graph to represent all three. It hence the flexibility and ability to evolve your authorization model in line with your federation story. So to recap, um, 
authorization ain't easy, uh, and context is really one, one of the biggest factors to that difficulties. Being able to decouple and represent that context within our permission models really helps tackle a lot of the challenges that we've been facing for authorization in our services. So there's a promising world down ahead, and hopefully you can feel a lot less like the sad frog and more like cash money frogs. So, but one more time, sac passe. Awesome, thank you.